Hello everyone. So, gonna do another review, this time for the series version of The Deadlands. So, The Deadlands is an eight-episode New Zealand TV series distributed on NZTV and internationally by the Shudder streaming service. So, if you haven't heard of Shudder, it's a service owned by AMC Networks that deals exclusively in horror content. And in case you couldn't tell from our weekly news videos, I'm a massive horror fan. So that's why I try to put in like those little horror news tidbits whenever I possibly can. And I can honestly say I've actually gotten way more use out of my Shutter account than any of the other streaming services lately. And that I've been, you know, currently subscribed to. So if you like horror, I definitely recommend you check out Shudder. And it's actually not that expensive as far as streaming services go. So this show was created by Glenn Standring, who wrote the Deadlands movie, which I also reviewed earlier this week, and have the link to that video in the description below. The directorial duties were split with four episodes being held by Peter Berger, who has done a number of Maori productions over the years, as well as several episodes of a couple recent Power Rangers series, so Dino Charge and Ninja Steel. With the remaining four episodes being directed by Michael Hurst, who some may remember from his involvement in the Hercules The Legendary Journeys and Xena Warrior Princess series back in the 90s, but more recently, he has directed episodes of Spartacus and Ash vs. the Evil Dead, the latter of which will definitely play into this show. If you saw the 2014 movie, something is going to stand out immediately to viewers of this series, which is the language. The movie was entirely in Te Reo Maori, with English subtitles, while this is mostly in English. I say mostly because there's actually a lot of Te Reo Maori spoken in this as well, which is actually one of the few issues I have with the show. Personally, I feel that the entire thing should have just been in Māori with English subtitles, because as it stands now, you have a mix of the two. It's not always clear why one is chosen to be spoken over the other, or even why there's two separate languages being spoken, because it's supposed to be set in a period before European contact. I completely understand that it's a creative choice to try to get draw in more international viewers, but in that case you should have just done the whole thing in English, or at least included subtitles in the Maori portions, which they don't. There's actually so many Maori words thrown into the English dialogue that Shudder actually included a glossary for viewers, which is extremely helpful, but I'm not sure that it should have been necessary in the first place. Again, I would have preferred if this was simply in Maori with English subtitles, but it's not really something that detracts from my overall enjoyment. It's just like an unusual peculiarity of the series. And I did actually learn quite a bit from it, since despite being mostly in English, the series adaptation of The Deadlands actually delves way more into different aspects of Maori culture, especially the more esoteric elements than the movie ever did. Another major difference between the two is the meaning behind the title. The Deadlands in this is much more literal than its film counterpart. The movie was very much set in the mortal world, and the term was just kind of thrown in there to describe an area where an entire tribe disappeared, and beyond a couple scenes of the lead character communing with the spirit of his dead grandmother, there's really not anything in the way of supernatural elements present. The series, however, takes a drastic departure from that almost immediately as their lead character, Waka Nukurao, played by Tekoe Tuhaka, who's actually the villain in the movie version, is killed in the first few moments of the series opener and enters the spirit world only to be faced with a ravenous zombie-like undead creature, which he kills, before being sent back to our world to repent for his various sins before he can be allowed to re-enter the realm of his ancestors. Upon returning to the living world, he finds that it too has been overrun by the same undead creature he killed in the afterlife, and he's quickly enlisted by a girl from another village named Mehe, who is played by new, new upcoming actress Darnine Christian. Mehe needs his help because it turns out her village was also attacked by these creatures, and some of them have taken her father, the village chieftain. No one in her tribe will help her because they all think he's dead, so then she essentially fills the role of our protagonist Hongi from the movie, however this time she's seeking the warrior's help to rescue her father instead of avenge him 
and there's plenty of survivors left in her village that all become side characters as the series progresses. The role of the warrior who is ruthlessly portrayed by Lawrence Makoare in the film is now much more likable and almost kind of a Han Solo-esque scoundrel character who seems to be only out for himself but adds plenty of levity to the story, bringing that Kiwi wit and sarcasm that was sorely lacking in the film version. I absolutely love his character, and Te Kohei Tuhaka's performance is easily one of the best parts of the series. The undead in this are very interesting, and different from most other zombies, since they are capable of wielding weapons and are essentially as deadly as any living warrior. Actually more so, because the only way to kill them is to decapitate them. The trade-off is that they can't convert you into a zombie by biting you or whatever like most zombie shows however anybody who dies becomes one of them because the kind of the sub the overarching plot of this series is that something has gone horribly wrong in the balance between life and death meaning the dead cannot enter the afterlife so if somebody dies they get sent right back and then they become these like undead creatures that exist between life and death and then, so the lead character's quest quickly shifts from simply rescuing Mehe's father to then trying to figure out who's responsible for breaking the world and uh, find a way to fix it. As the story progresses, the viewer is introduced to a number of fascinating supernatural concepts from Maori tradition. And we meet a number of different characters along the way, such as a trio of witches who perform an exorcism at one point, which was cool. And the ancestral spirit of Waka's dead mother, who serves a similar purpose to Hongi's grandmother in the movie as the protagonist's spirit guide. But here she frequently taunts him at every opportunity because she knows all of Waka's buttons and can't seem to help herself from pushing them constantly. She also has the tendency to give him less than helpful advice, which prompts Waka to frequently proclaim that the dead lie even worse than the living, it seems. In addition to the spirit of Waka's mother... He also has frequent visions of another mysterious character known only as Ka, who is actually the guy who sent him back to the world of the living at the start of the series. And he also gives him advice which may or may not be helpful. But his true identity is hidden and it's another question the characters continue to ask as the series progresses. Later about the midway point we're introduced to a new threat in the form of Tipwa. And Tipwa is kind of the Maori word for demon, and they're kind of and they're basically invisible entities who can possess the living, and the only way to stop them is a protective magic circle. And this is where the Sam Raimi influence goes into full gear, because every time they appear, we we never see them except for a moment where you have like black smoke coming out of somebody's mouth or something. But what does happen is we shift into the perspective, like the point of view perspective of a Tipua. And as they stalk potential hosts, so it basically it does the evil dead, like deadite camera pan across the forest as it goes towards the target. And that's always been kind of a staple of the evil dead franchise. And they do that here too. So it's obviously taken influence from Sam Raimi. There's a number of side characters of note, including Mehe's brother Rangi, who's played by Maori actor and Ben Stiller lookalike Jordi Weber. But the plot does follow our two leads pretty much the entire time, almost exclusively, which means that it's very tightly run story, which doesn't get too bogged down with multiple subplots, which is always a danger if there's too many characters in your series. Another aspect that deserves discussion is the excellent fight choreography that occurs frequently throughout the entire series. Basically, if you enjoyed the Maurakao fighting style from the movie, then you can expect to see a lot more of it in the series as well, and many of the show's best fights are on par with anything in the movie. As you can probably tell, I thoroughly enjoyed this series, and the 8 episode length made it perfect for binge watching. My only major complaint is the ending. I don't want to give anything away, really, but it doesn't manage to actually give any real closure to the characters and actually ramps up the stakes considerably like in the last five minutes of the show. So the show hasn't been given a season continuation as of the time of this recording, but it also hasn't been canceled either. So do the small viewership afforded to a Shutter production as well as the pandemic situation we're all living in. I'm hoping an announcement has just been delayed and that we'll know one way or another within the next few months. As it stands now as a series finale, it's 
definitely not the best and it's kind of a little bit disappointing and I feel if this is the actual end that it takes a bit away from my overall enjoyment of the show but as it stands now I'm giving season one a seven out of ten but if it turns out that it's simply transitioning into an even bigger second season my rating for the series will probably go up to an eight out of ten Again, I definitely enjoyed the Deadlands and felt the added cultural elements as well as the witty performances from the lead cast put it slightly above the film version, in my opinion. And as a huge horror fan, the undead threat element just made it so much better. So if you enjoyed the film adaptation, are interested in Maori culture, or just looking for a fun, fast-paced, action-packed horror series, I recommend you give the Deadlands a watch. And the Courageur Knights will be returning this weekend for the latest movie and video game news roundup. It's going to be a long one this time, so expect to see several videos scattered throughout the week for that. And as always, thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time. Bye!